Oh, hey. Hey, Jerry. Good to see hey, you, man. Ed. Good to see you. Looks like you're uh, hunting for some coffee. I was thinking about it. Well, how about a road trip? Let's go grab one on the road. It's been a while since we've caught up. Let's spend a few minutes together chatting about what's happening. Sure, what the heck. You got a few minutes? Uh, yeah, and I can drive. I'll just meet you out front. Perfect. I'll catch you there. Jerry! Hey, Ed. This is a classic. <laughs> She's my baby. I'm oh. gonna hang on to her as long as I can. What uh, what year is this? Uh, like 2006, and it's got over 200,000 miles on it. Wow, these things do last <laughs> forever. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, I hope it lasts another 200, but uh, it's probably a little much. <laughs> well, I. Uh... I'm certainly impressed how good it looks and the fact it's an 06 with that kind of mileage is a testament to uh, this car, that's for sure. Japanese engineer. <laughs> anyway. So where, where are we going to go uh, get a good cup of coffee? Um, I thought a little town called Phoenixville. Hmm. Uh, it's Never right been. next door. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, sort of a local specialty, I guess. Uh, but it's really well known for uh, the movie The Blob. Okay. Classic horror movie okay. from the 50s. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was actually shot in that town. Oh, fantastic. So we'll go by the place where it actually was shot. And, Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's you do may it. remember it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. All right. Sounds like an adventure. Yeah. The blob. <laughs> I'll have to You're go have to uh, get the, the video yeah, now. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure it's streaming someplace. <laughs> I'm excited to see where the blob was filmed, <laughs> but I'm even more excited to hear about your engagements out there in the marketplace. Yeah, well, uh, that's my bread and butter. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your life, Jerry. So what, uh, every what, day I'm out there talking about <laughs> automating customer orders, automating logistics yeah. processes, uh, automating supplier base. Um, this afternoon, there's one I'm pretty excited about. It's a client who's relatively new to us, and we've been running um, strategic consulting workshops, uh, kind of guiding them along the way about how to um, how to uh, automate their supplier base as well as their ocean logistics, and some road logistics in there too for the drainage part. And um, yeah, I mean it's uh, been really good so far. So um, what the, what what were some of the things that uh, made them uh, want to partner with us and, and say I want to get on board your uh, your supply chain uh, operating network? Absolutely, the expertise that we have it's really unparalleled. It's a, they're a classic chemical company. They make uh, garden hoses amongst other things. Sell them through big box retailers like Walmart and Kmart. Um, and then they have some other products as well, but that, that's probably their biggest product line. And so for their industry, our credentials were just sterling. Yeah, you know, cannot be beat. Yeah, you know, we have um, all the the client list that not, would knock anybody's socks off. We got the um, hit years and years of history of implementing these kinds of solutions, and basically they wanted somebody who could guide them. You know, tell them you know what they should do, uh, what their message sets should look like, what their business processes should look like, and they're willing to be flexible and work with us and uh, and basically execute on uh, the recommendations that we're making. So it's uh, it's uh, going to be a really good client for us. Looks like we have a road closure. Uh, whoa! Will that affect us? Local traffic only. Um, we well, will find out. We huh? We're on an adventure out. here. Yeah, we may not make it to Phoenixville. Uh, <laughs> the Blob. The Blob is there right the, now, the wreaking havoc in town, and they're the trying town. to yeah keep us from uh, getting there. So uh, based on these uh, road closures, <laughs> I fired up good old uh, Google Maps here. Yeah. And we find found an alternate route to the blob. Here. So we're going to take a, a more uh, circuitous route. Yes. So. Yes. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna loop around and find another way over the river. All right. Sounds like a winner. Fantastic. Looks like we are coming to a town square. I see Main yeah, Street yeah. up ahead. This is it. Wow, so this, this is, is really uh, neat. I'm liking Phoenixville. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, this it's is been really a neat. neat little place. It's an old steel town, so a lot of it's kind of Victorian era. Um, you'll see this uh, Molly McGuire's really nice uh, Irish pub. The place I was thinking about for the coffee is this Steel City oh, right Coffee. Here. Right oh, here. look, we can shimmy right into. And I guess we can pull right in. Yeah, or there's one up here. It looks oh, like it'll be a much it's easier. Even better, yeah. yeah. Here we go. 
Wow. So uh, I, I am a great parallel parker, I got to tell you, but you're not going to get to see my parallel parking skills since this one uh, was just a slide right in. Uh, yeah, well, it's a missed opportunity. You're giving me reason to come back. <laughs> All right. Very good. Oh man, this is good right coffee, around. Jerry. That's a great <laughs> recommendation. That's good stuff. They did a nice job. Little, little local outfit. Yeah, that was uh, good. Yeah, that's uh, definitely something I can't get back home in uh, Atlanta. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I appreciate you doing that. So I see a marquee up ahead. <laughs> there oh, it is, no, huh? It's the blob. The infamous <laughs> colonial. The Colonial Yale Theater, and so again, if you screen that movie, you're going to see that. I am going to be YouTubing that this evening <laughs> when I get back to the uh, hotel to check it out, now that I've been here. So our, our, our customers are using QuickLink email mm -hmm. to do more automation and provide better quality of service. Mm -hmm. We're in that long tail of automation, uh, this, this quick link address. Is this simply the, the outliers way on the end, or is it mm. closer to uh, where the tail begins? Actually, I did a, a blog several years ago about the level of the percentage of automation. Mm -hmm made it orders uh, that our clients have and it really was a broad range and in fact for uh, some clients well these are probably non-clients to tell the truth it's zero uh, for some other clients it's pretty close to zero like one percent is that exponentially getting faster i think it is if you're talking about a quick link email client of ours just because that's a tool that allows them to get uh, lots of customers onboarded very quickly, very uh, inexpensively, relatively inexpensively. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I heard the other day from one of my colleagues that uh, Dow just recently deployed their 1,000th QuickLink email customer, mm -hmm. which is a huge number. And if you think, it took them probably a dozen years to onboard dozens of uh, larger volume customers using traditional B2B techniques with their Olympica network. And then suddenly to be able to add a thousand, mm -hmm. you know, in a very mm -hmm. brief amount of time over just a, you know, one, two years, that's just, that's uh, an exponential increase in speed, as you say. So one of the things, uh, you know, we haven't talked about with the, uh, with QuickLink email, and, and one of the things I think is really the beauty of it and makes it so attractive is that the customer gets to keep whatever PO format they like. Oh. So they really make no changes. A lot of clients, when you start the discussion, they're like, yeah, well, but you know, you're going to impose change on my customer, right? Oh, that's never going to work. Oh, you, you need some sort of standard templates and standard format in order for this solution to work, right? But the answer is no, not no. at all. And in fact, each customer can have a unique format. In fact, we expect that they will. And we map to the customer's format. So customer keeps whatever format they like. We don't ask them to make any changes whatsoever. Uh, they don't have to make any kind of IT investment. They don't have to um, make any process changes. They basically just keep doing things the way they have always been doing them. And they keep emailing you those, uh, those uh, POs in that format that they like. And we magically are mapping that behind the scenes, translating it to our client's uh, format and uh, making sure that it all works seamlessly and it's all automated for our client. It's a beautiful it thing. Is it, is it fair to say that, you know, from a customer's perspective, you know, obviously, as you're describing it, they know something's changing or going on. But do, do they even really have to know? I mean, uh, as you described it, couldn't it fundamentally be completely transparent to them? It absolutely could be. And uh, some clients actually take that as a strategy. They don't inform the customer that they're automating their orders. Uh, and the customer may notice, hey, things are getting snappier, faster, I'm getting better service. Uh, I'm getting order receipt acknowledgements and those sorts of things yeah, in a timely I, way, right? Right. That I, I used to have to wait a half a day or even a whole day to get. Now suddenly they're responding to, to me very Within quickly. Minutes. Within minutes. Within yeah. minutes even, yeah. 
Okay. How's that happening? And sometimes, you know, the client will fess up and say, yeah, well, actually. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. been, uh, we've been converting your, all, your, your, your emailed order into a structured uh, uh, message into our ERP. In, okay. Right into our operational system. Okay. So, and that's where the benefit comes in for the final customer, uh, which is good. You know, makes our clients easier to do business with, uh, better business partners at the end of the day.